Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here today. What I want to do is I want to look at jumping. I was having a conversation with my son earlier this week about uh, playing basketball and how high you can jump, right? That's something we call a vertical leap. And a little known factoid, I have a pretty decent vertical leap for a 44 year old man. Here's the empirical data, right? Um, I have a vertical leap that is approximately 60 centimeters based on this video data. Um, that's a little bit less than two feet. All right, so what if I took this vertical leap and I went somewhere else like the surface of another planet, right? The surface of the moon, the surface of Jupiter, Mercury. So let's examine how high I would jump uh, on those other surfaces. We're going to look at the kinematic equations, make a couple assumptions, and do the calculation and compare. Okay, I like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. All right, let's get started. All right, so we want to know how high I can jump on the Earth uh, versus the Moon versus Mercury and versus Jupiter. And we've seen from the video that I can jump approximately 60 centimeters. Okay, that's 0.6 meters is my maximum height on the Earth. Now that is a result of my initial speed, right, when I'm launching off the surface, and also a property of the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Earth. That number is approximately 9.8 meters per second squared. We're going to have a different value on the Moon. We'll have to calculate it versus Mercury versus Jupiter, right? The acceleration due to gravity on the surface of Jupiter is much bigger uh, than the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. So we're gonna get a different value. All right, so let's now look at the kinematics on the Earth and compare the calculation for other planets. All right, we're gonna start on the Earth. Uh, here's some of the uh, data for the Earth. We have the mass of the Earth here and the radius of the Earth. Uh, little g, the acceleration due to gravity, is given by this equation. It's equal to big G, the mass of the planet, divided by the radius squared. And big G is a universal gravitational constant. Here's the value right here. And it's going to be the same everywhere on the moon, on the surface of Jupiter, on the surface of Mercury. Okay, so if we're interested in the value of the acceleration due to gravity on the Earth, well, guess what? All you have to do is then just substitute the mass of the Earth here and the radius of the Earth. We put in all the values and we're going to get approximately 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so this number is super important because this is the number we're going to use in our uh, kinematic equations. Now remember, the acceleration due to gravity is also pointing down, right? Gravity is an attractive force, so we are attracted to the Earth. All right, so let's have a look now at some of the kinematics. So we start here on the ground, and what we're doing is we're starting with some initial velocity pointing up when we jump, right? We're going to have some value v naught. And I don't know what that value is, but we're gonna calculate it based on my maximum height. Now, one thing I know about the maximum height here is that once I'm at the top, at right, the top of my trajectory, my final velocity here is zero instantaneously. All right, so we can use this fact to help us find what this initial velocity is. All right, so we have three kinematic equations. Uh, what we could do is look at these equations. I'm gonna start with well, let's try to find how much time does it take to go to the top. All right, so again, um, let me just write that down. So once we know the time, we can figure a bunch of stuff out. Uh, time to go uh, to the top. I'm gonna use the fact that I know that my final velocity is zero. And if I use the second equation right here, right, V final equals to V initial minus little g times T, right? If I set this equal to zero, I'm left with an expression. All right, let's just get the time to go to the top. So the time to go to the top is simply V0 divided by little g. So this is kind of a really, really important equation, right? Because it tells me that the faster I go, right, the bigger this guy is, the more time I'm going to spend in the air. Basically going to mean I'm going to go higher. However, look, if I divide by little g, in this case, I have to divide by 9.8. Right? But if little g is bigger on another planet or smaller on another planet, right, it's going to change the amount of time that I'm in the air. So that's also going to affect the height. So we have two things playing against each other. Okay? We have the velocity and the acceleration due to gravity. All right, now how do we find um, our initial velocity? So uh, what we can do now is we can use uh, one of our equations right here in order to find this. 
Okay, let's go use the first equation here because our first equation, we know what the maximum height is. So instead of writing our displacement in that vertical direction, I just substitute by the maximum value. And that there is equal to V naught. All right, how much time did it take to get to the top? Well, this is the time right here that we just calculated. So this is a little bit of algebra. So now we have to substitute this time into this equation. We get V naught multiplied by little g. All right, we still have our second term here, which is minus one half little g. And now again, we substitute the time in there. We get V naught over little g and we have to square this term. All right, now keep following. We're just about done. This is H max. Um, the first term is V naught squared over little g. And the second term, look, it's exactly the same thing, except there's a one half in the front. All right, we have little g here. We're going to have V naught squared and we're going to have g squared once I distribute that squared term right here. All right, you can cancel out one of these and one of those and you get the exact same value. So at the end, what you're left with here is one half V naught squared divided by little g. All right, my goal at the end was always to find what is the initial velocity here. How fast am I jumping in order to get to this height? So now we have our final expression here. So I'm going to do a little bit of algebra. Let's get V naught by itself. We'll start with V naught squared. I bring the two on the other side and I bring little g on the other side. So I'm left with two little g multiplied by H max. Okay. And to get V naught by itself, all you have to do is take the square root on each side. So let me get rid of this. If I take the square root of this expression, I'm just about done. The only thing I have left to do now is substitute in um, the values. So let's go ahead and do that. We know little g on the earth is approximately 9.8. And from the empirical data from the video, I saw my height was approximately 0.6. Well, this means that my initial velocity, if you substitute in all the numbers there, we get an initial velocity of approximately 3.43 meters per second. This initial velocity is going to allow me to jump a distance of 0.6 if the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8. Now, a little tip, I could have gotten that problem right away from using the third equation right here. All right, I'll show you how to do that really, really quickly. Because at the top, you know that V final is zero. So here we're left with V initial and minus two times little g, and what is my displacement at the top? It's h max. You should be able to see that this equation right here is going to look exactly like the last one I wrote here. Right? Eventually, if you solve this guy for v naught, you're gonna get the same value. All right, so going forward now, we're going to assume that this here is my initial velocity on all the other planets. So we have to do now is calculate now what is going to be the maximum height on other planets and the total amount of time in the air. This here is the time to go to the top. If you wanted to know the total time, the total time is very, very straightforward. It takes the same amount of time to go up as it does to come back down. So this is simply two V naught divided by little g. This is the total time. All right, so let's now look at the moon. It has a different mass, a much smaller mass, 0.073 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. And it's smaller, right? It has a smaller radius. So now we have to calculate what is the acceleration due to gravity on the surface. And if you actually substitute in all these values, you should get approximately 1.6 meters per second squared, right? It's about a sixth of the value on the Earth. So again, we're interested in what is the maximum height, if this is the ground, and what is the total time uh, that I'm going to be in the air. Now, it's certainly going to be longer because little g is small. Now, one assumption that we make is that we have the same initial velocity as on the Earth. Okay, and that itself is an approximation. And our value is 3.43 meters per second. All right, so let's go ahead now and calculate what is the maximum value. Uh, maximum value, our equation for the maximum value looked like this, one half V naught squared divided by little g. And now we have to use the little g on the moon. Uh, we substitute in our values here, one half uh, V naught 3.43 squared divided by little g on the moon, 1.6. Uh, we get a height in meters that's approximately 3.68 meters. All right, this is approximately 12 feet, All right, really, really high. Now what else, what is our time, right? Total time, 
uh, for the moon jump is going to be our equation for moon uh, for any surface was two times that initial velocity divided by little g and now we have to use the moon value our initial value is still the 3.43 uh, substituting our values here uh, divided by g moon 1.6 we get a total flight time of about 4.3 seconds man that would be fun right to be up in the air for 4.3 seconds before landing back on the surface all right let's go have a look at mercury now all right for mercury now again we have a different mass and a different radius uh, these are the values i found online we substitute them in there to calculate what the acceleration due to gravity is and i get a value of 3.7 meters per second squared now again, we can find what our maximum height is, pretty straightforward. Substituting in there, we're going to get a maximum height that is approximately 1.6 meters. That's like a meter higher than what the value is on Earth. Our total flight time now, um, putting in our values. Again, always assuming that we have the same initial velocity, we get a total flight time of 1.85 uh, seconds. All right, our last case we want to consider now is Jupiter, so let's do that one. All right, we now go to the biggest planet in our solar system, Jupiter. All right, here's the astronomical data I found. So much larger mass and a much bigger radius. Again, now we have to substitute the fine little g on Jupiter. And we substitute my values, I get 24.8. That's meters per second squared. Our maximum height now, again, one half. My initial velocity assumed to be a constant value divided by now this new value of 24.8, uh, we get a maximum height of only 0 0.24 meters, right? Less than a foot. Oh, I better lower the basketball hoops. And the total time that I'm in the air, again, two multiplied by my initial velocity and divided by 24.8, I get a big value, big air time of 0.28 seconds. All right, so there you have. Now let's put everything in a chart just to compare these numbers. All right, put it all together now. Based on all that astronomical data, we could calculate little g for each one. All right, the moon was 1.6, Mercury 3.7, uh, Jupiter approximately 24.8. Uh, we had our maximum height from the video that was 0.6, and the total flight time was approximately 0.7. If you're gonna want to jump the highest, clearly you want to go to the moon. That's where little g is the smallest. You're gonna have a total flight time of uh, 4.3 seconds. Man. Uh, Mercury, maybe a little bit better than the Earth, right? Kind of twice, maybe the value for the time, a little bit more than two times. But the worst <laughs> has to be the surface of Jupiter, right? You're only jumping about 0.24 meters, 24 centimeters, and you're only up in the air for a third of a second. Not too much fun. All right, thanks for watching, folks. Hopefully you learned something.